uh, Tito Carrero coming right now to tell us about uh, how to uh, like how he, you manage the transition from a manager to a manager of manager. So VP um, Tito is the VP at Segment. He has worked previously uh, at Dropbox and at Facebook, and you're now managing the um, engineering team at uh, Segment. Thank you so much for being a mentor and for accepting to talk tonight. Thank you. I'm feeling incredibly awkward that I'm wearing the same shirt that I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not what I'm supposed to do. Um, cool. So I uh, I have three stories uh, that I want to share. Um, each of these are kind of important st stories in my journey to uh, becoming a manager of managers. Uh, there are light lessons about each story that I will uh, share as I go. Um, so story one uh, is really about my initial transition to, to managing managers, uh, sort of where it all got started. So for this story, we will rewind to 2012. Uh, I've just joined Dropbox. Uh, I'm super excited about uh, leading the Dropbox for Business, business Engineering effort. Um, apparently, uh, no one was working on that before I got there. And so I uh, wanted to, to start working on that. And so um, uh, I had been there for about three to six months. We were kind of cruising on uh, the set of projects. We had a pretty awesome roadmap. There's pretty clear feedback from customers about exactly uh, what set of things that customers wanted. And so we were cruising on this roadmap. And uh, basically, we hit this stumbling block of sorts, which was all, f all feature requests were leading toward uh, this one big project uh, that we called Two Account. And Two Account was uh, basically the ability to have a work account and a personal account uh, running at the same time on the desktop client, on the iOS and Android apps, and on the website. And obviously, in the early days, uh, Drew and Arash were not, uh, as they were hacking on the early architecture of all these platforms, they were not thinking through, like, oh, we should support uh, multiple. Uh, users one day, let's architect this thing properly. Uh, and so this, this was a really, really big endeavor. Um, and we actually had a, an early PM, I distinctly remember telling me that this project would be impossible to ship, to which I said, challenge accepted. Uh, and, uh, and that sort of became my mission uh, about three to six months in at Dropbox. And so um, that project was sort of the, the beginning of, of my uh, career to, to managing managers. And um, there was a, a basically a pretty big gap in the immediate team I had and, and what we needed to do to, to actually ship this thing. Uh, specifically, we needed to re-architect the desktop client across Windows, Linux, and Mac. We needed to re-architect iOS. We needed to re-architect Android. And we needed to re-architect the web. And so I just kind of charged at this problem head first, as I like to do with problems. And um, basically, uh, time went on, and we probably took a couple years off my life, but we managed to ship this project within about six months. Uh, and after I was done, they, they asked if I wanted to, to take over uh, managing uh, this team that they were forming called Dropbox App. And so uh, the Dropbox App team was essentially the, the core team that I had just sort of project managed from the outside uh, to, to get this two account project done. And so I was super excited. You know, I had been waiting my entire career uh, for this opportunity. And I, I said, of course, I want to do this. Um, I started thinking about all of these like awesome like career plans I had for these like new engine managers I would be taking on. I uh, excitedly get to my my first one on ones, uh, and they are like, "Who the hell are you? We do not want to report to you." <laughs> so it was a bummer. Um, so I think uh, the the kind of lesson I, I learned from this, and it was a painful first three to six months, but it's every single. <laughs> Uh, relationship, and it's not just people who report to you, although I think it's especially important for people who report to you. Uh, there's this trust building period, and you need to really, really, really invest uh, in that relationship. And it took you know three to six months for some of these relationships to, to get to where I wanted to be. Um, and I think that was like a kind of rude awakening, but an important uh, lesson for me that I was completely unprepared for. Um, the second story is right around this time. Uh, this was hiring my first external manager. Um, so this was about two months before I, I made the transition to, to leading Dropbox app, uh, early 2013. Uh, a gift from the heavens uh, fell onto my lap. Uh, a principal engineer at VMware uh, was incredibly excited. He only wanted to work on one project, Dropbox for Business. He didn't care at all what role, like IC, tech lead, people manager, like didn't matter to him. He just saw a huge potential in Dropbox for Business and wanted to, to make it so. And so uh, you know, we interviewed him. He absolutely aced it. Uh, he's like, OK, I'll, like, I'm going to join the Dropbox for Business team. 
Um, remember, we gave him a ramp up project, which he just absolutely crushed out of the park. He was a little rusty on the Python, but uh, really knocked it out of the park. Um, and so as I was sort of two months later, as I was uh, getting promoted into this new role leading a, a larger team with, with bigger scope, um, I, I needed a, a manager to take over the Dropbox for Business team, which was the team that I had been leading. Uh, and so naturally, I, I, uh, I thought of him. And so uh, I, I remember this one-on-one -on -one pretty distinctly. I'm a little nervous at this point, because usually when I'm uh, transitioning a, a first-time manager, uh, you know, three to five people is like a good number of direct reports to start with. This is a little bit bigger a team. I think it's probably about eight, eight people, something like that. And I say, uh, you know, hey, Matt, uh, would you be willing to, to take on this? I think it's a little bit of a challenge as a first-time manager uh, taking on a team of eight people. Uh, and Matt looks at me a little funny. He's like, I'm not sure how this didn't come, come up in the interview, but I actually, I'm, I was managing a team of 150 people at VMware, to which I turned bright red. Uh, the lesson here is at some point, uh, and this is the greatest privilege about managing managers, you will find someone, you will hire them, and they will be far better than you at your job. Uh, this person that I'm talking about, is, uh, his name is Matt Eccleston. He is the VP of Engineering uh, at Dropbox Now. Uh, <laughs> He technically reported to me for, for three years uh, in a sort of a bizarre arrangement, but I will promise you I learned a lot more from him than he learned from me, uh, and eventually uh, just got out of the way, um, and, and he has continued to ascend. Um, so I, th I think uh, that is like a really, really special part of managing managers, is you get that, that opportunity to do that. Um, and so uh, if that happens to you, get the heck out of the way. Uh, I think I spent too long getting out of the way uh, in retrospect. Um, third story, uh, I often refer to this as my uh, biggest mistake at Dropbox. Um, this was late 2014, so to set the scene, uh, we had been hiring uh, a whole bunch of people through these aqua hires throughout uh, 2014. Uh, I'd probably led something like 10 different small acquisitions of like one to three engineers for the most part. And sort of toward the end of 2014, I found like this awesome company that were located uh, in Tel Aviv, Israel. It's a team of 15 to 20 people. Uh, we do the acquisition, the aqua hire process. We interview everyone. I interview the site lead, like spend a lot of time there. Just like crazy, crazy good process. And, and we really kind of check all of the boxes. Um, we decide to, to go through the acquisition. And uh, about three to six months later, uh, every single EM and PM in San Francisco absolutely hates me. And uh, the problem was uh, we, we had sort of like rationally known about sort of the time zone difference. We had sort of rationally even known that Tel Aviv uh, works Sunday through Thursday, which is a slightly different work week from here, obviously. Um, but we hadn't realized was sort of how painful it would be kind of going uh, for each of these eng managers, each of these PMs in San Francisco to be awake at like 9 a.m. on a Sunday, like giving the Tel Aviv team uh, instructions on what to do for, for their equivalent of Monday morning, or actually is their Monday evening by that point. Um, and so I think, uh, I don't know the exact lesson to take here. I think it's that you can really run a process well and you can kind of do all of the things uh, properly, but people systems are a hell of a lot more complex than uh, engineering systems and uh, you can still totally get it wrong. Uh, I still, when I think back to like how exactly I would have avoided this or, or known, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, would have spent a lot more time talking to the San Francisco team about um, just about this and whether they wanted to make the, the group commitment that we needed to make this thing successful. Um, but it definitely was not, uh, was not my finest moment. Um, so yeah, in, in closing, I, I guess I, I just want to talk briefly about this concept of failure as I was like reviewing all of these stories uh, and thinking about a lot more stories uh, in the past uh, when I was picking the, the ones I wanted to tell. Uh, I kind of kept coming back to this feeling of failure and, and just realizing that I had, had made all of these mistakes and we spent a lot of time tonight talking about that. And I think uh, as your org is growing and by the end of my time at Dropbox I was managing about 170 people uh, across a bunch of different offices. Um, basically your opportunities for failure in your org also start to grow uh, quite a bit. Um, if you think about the math, like if everyone has like one bad week every three years uh, when you're managing a team of 170 people, uh, there will be one bad week happening across your org every single week. Uh, those fires will probably come back uh, up to you and you will have to deal with them. And I think it's really easy to just kind of get uh, swept away by this feeling of, of failure. And um, 
I do this little ritual now. Uh, so every six weeks we have a board meeting at Segment. Um, and I uh, write down like a very detailed synthesis of everything that has gone uh, wrong. Uh, there's always stuff that's gone wrong. I also do a detailed synthesis of all the progress we've made since the last board meeting. Uh, and then I sit there for about five minutes and I just pat myself on the back very aggressively for all of the things going right. And I think um, that's sort of like how I, I stay sane uh, as my kind of roles and responsibilities uh, have grown over the years is you really need to appreciate all the things that you're doing right. And you don't get that sort of dopamine hit of watching your code make it to production and like be viewed by the world. And, like, I remember that rush. It's a great, great, great rush. Um, and so as you start to kind of get away from that, I think it's really important that you kind of take a step back and like appreciate all the things that are going right and all the progress that uh, you have been making, uh, since it's really, really easy to forget about that and be swept away by the failure. All right, thank you. All right. How do you measure your manager's performance? Um, great question. Uh, I mean, just it kind of boils down to like what's getting done on the team. I think uh, I view it's a little bit of a, like a, the more you can kind of view it as a. I mean, obviously you, you dive in, but the more you can view it as a black box when you're thinking about performance is like what what resources are going in here, kind of what uh, investment are we making as a company, uh, and what are the results that are coming out of the black box and uh, and I think like that's like the most baseline. Actually, uh, one of my managers was asking me today. Uh, he's like, uh, "This is my last one of one of the day." He said, uh, "How did you know that X person wasn't doing well? Uh, you're like quite far away from this. Um, like, I just don't understand how you had that spidey sense. Can you tell me?" And I said, "It's very simple. Every week, like at the end of the week, I just like ask myself like." what did each person accomplish? And if I can't answer that question, you know, maybe one week it's okay, but if it's like a couple weeks in a row where I just, I don't know what they've been doing, what the result is, I, I start to get worried and I, I start to ask. And I think uh, managers uh, are pretty similar. It's like a sum of a bunch of resources and you wanna see uh, sort of results coming out the other side. Now, obviously it doesn't always happen perfectly and it's important that at that point to dig in and figure out is you know, someone like the wrong fit for the team, um, it, like, are the resources wrong? Is the project not clear? The, there can be a, a million things that are wrong, but I think at the most basic level, a team that is, um, is happy and a team that is, is really cranking out impact uh, is a healthy team and a, and a very strong manager. And, and when that's not happening, uh, I tend to be concerned and, and dig in. Ooh, role of VPE versus CTO. Uh, so this one is different at every, uh, at every place. Um, uh, segment is sort of unusual. Uh, so I got to segment on my first day. Uh, the CTO and the uh, one of our product co-founders both asked if they could report to me. Uh, it was a very bizarre uh, and strange move. And I said, I, I guess. Um, I think uh, our CTO really wanted nothing to do with uh, hiring. He had been hiring for uh, quite some time. Uh, he also wa had uh, really wanted nothing to do uh, with product management um, or project management or people management. Um, and so uh, we have a very uh, blissful relationship. All of the things that I love doing uh, are things that are not on his uh, interest list. Um, I would say CTOs tend to be uh, a little bit more responsible for sort of setting the, the technical direction, um, the, the public face of the, the brand uh, of the company. Uh, so, so Calvin, our CTO, does a, a bunch of incredible writing for, for our blog writing that I am definitely not capable of doing, and he uh, is deeply responsible for hiring uh, lots of great engineering talent because he writes all of these great engineering blog posts. Um, but it, it really depends on the company and, and the CTO and uh, the VPE, but I would say VPEs tend to be more responsible for hiring and people management and kind of scaling the org and making sure that the, the black box keeps uh, functioning well, and, and CTOs tend to be a little bit more responsible for the the brand and the, the technical direction and the, the future of the product and kind of seeing around corners, uh, especially infrastructure corners uh, or, or product corners that we're, we're likely to run into. All right, am I done? All right, thank you very much.